A select box, also known as combo box or drop down, is an important component of a web application. It is useful for displaying a field which can have multiple options and let user choose one or more options, such as a list of cars or models of a car or types of credit cards available for a user, etc. In today's video, we will take a look at a very popular package that can be used to display select box in Angular applications. The package is ng-select. Advantages of this package is that it is widely used. You can see the count of its weekly downloads. As such, you can find a lot of help on the internet. It is regularly updated as you can see here. It is available for all versions of Angular and the last update was only two months ago. It is super easy to use and highly customizable with its properties. Here you can see this working. You can even type to search for any option if the list of options is long. It can also be used as a multi-select box when the number of selections can be more than one. In this video, we will understand how to install it, how to use it to display a list of options, its item selection event, how to use it with Angular's template and reactive forms, how to set its value, disable it, etc. etc. Let's start by creating an Angular application from scratch. Navigate to the folder where you want the application to be created. Open command prompt and type ng new followed by the application name. It will ask for a couple of configuration options. We do not need routing, so no. We will take SCSS as the styling format. This will download all the required dependencies and might take some time. Our application has been successfully created. To open VS Code here, use command code space dot, hit enter. This will open VS Code with the project loaded by default. Go to its package.json file. Package.json lists all the required dependencies for this project. The version of Angular is 12. So, as per the version compatibility of ng-select, we need to install version 7.x. Copy the command to install ng-select. This command will install the latest version of ng-select. To know the exact version that we need to install, click this tab. Here we can see that there are all these versions in the 7.x series. We will take the latest one. To install a specific version, paste the command to install it, followed by add the rate and version number. Hit enter. If we look at package.json, it has installed the required version. Type command ng space serve to start the application. It is up and running at localhost colon 4200. Go to the browser and hit this URL. It works. This is the default layout provided by Angular on its own. Go to VS Code. Default component that is loaded is app component. So go to its app.component.html file. Remove all this code since we do not need it. Save. All the default layout is gone. Now let's add ng-select to the application. As a first step, we need to add its style sheet. Copy this URL. Go to the application styles file and paste it. Back to the components HTML file. Add a div that will act as a container for the dropdown. Give it some style. To add ng-select, use its tag which is ng-select. Options of ng-select are populated from an array of objects. Go to the ts file of this component and create an array. Define an object with two fields, let's say id and name. One of these fields will be used as a display value and other will be sent to the backend server and used to persist its value to the database when you submit the form. It is not necessary for these fields to be id and name. They can be anything relevant to your requirement. It is also not necessary to keep two fields. You can keep a single field if your display and persisted values are the same. Duplicate these to add more options. Change the IDs. To link the array elements to the option of ng-select, assign the array to its items property. Now, there are two keys, ID and name in the array. Out of these, which property will be the display value? For this, use the bind label property of ng-select and assign it the property of array objects whose value you want to display. So 
it will be name. Similarly, its bind value property will correspond to the property of array that will be sent to the backend server. For making the selector of ng-select recognizable by this component, add ng-select module to its module. If you don't do this, then this error will be raised. This error says that the component does not know anything about ng-select. Save. The application has successfully compiled. So back to the browser. Look, the dropdown is successfully displayed. A change event means an event that is triggered when an item is selected or removed from ng-select. This event is useful to know which option was selected or removed and is required when you want to display the item selected or set their value. To capture the change event, ng-select provides a change function. Assign it to a function that needs to be called on change event. This function should accept an argument of type $event. Create this function in TS file. This argument will give access to the selected element. Log it to the console. Go to the browser. Right click. Inspect and go to console. Select an item. Look, it printed the current selected item. It has two fields, ID and name of the selected array element. You can also have other properties for an element. For example, you might want to keep track of cost of each item. So add a new key with cost. Now when you go to the browser and select the first element, it also gives the price. You can see that there is a cross at the corner. If you click it, the dropdown becomes empty and it prints undefined since there is no selected value now. To prevent this, either we can check in the change function or we can remove the option to clear the select box. For this, ng-select provides a property clearable. Set it to false. Save. Look, there is no option to clear the selection. As we saw earlier, ng-select can also be used for selecting multi-values. For this, set its multiple property to true, which is false by default. Now we can select multiple values. When ng-select is used as a multi-select, the selected values are stored as an array. So, every time we select a value, this array contains all the currently selected items, as you can see here. Now, you might have noticed a problem. First, clear all items. Every time we select an item, the dropdown closes and we have to open it again to select another item. This becomes very painful when the number of options to be selected are more. ng-select provides this as a configurable option which is close on select property. Set this to false. We can easily select multiple options without opening it again and again. Now let's look at disabling the dropdown. Disabling might be required when you don't want someone to change the option selected once it is saved. An example would be a pizza order. You can't change it to being packed after it is delivered. To disable the dropdown, ng-select provides a read-only property. Set this to true. Look, now you cannot change its value. Now comes the most interesting and important part, using ng-select with Angular forms. First, we will understand this for template forms and then we will take a look for reactive forms. Remove all this. For template forms, in order to make an element as a form control, we need to add ng-model directive to it and add a name attribute. Create a form and bind a function with its submit event. For template forms, the event is ng-submit. Create a button that will submit the form. We need to define a variable that is bind to ng-model. Create this variable in the component ts file. Create a function for handling submit event. Simply log it. This value will be the selected option of ng-select at the time the form is submitted. To make template-based form recognizable by the component, 
we need to import forms module in this components module. Back to the browser, select a value and click save. Look, we are getting the IDs of selected options. The reason we are getting ID is that we have configured the bind value property to ID. If we change this to name, then we will get the label of selected value. Select a value and click save. Look, we are getting the labels now. With reactive forms, we need to bind the forms form group property to a form group object or instance. We need to create this instance in the corresponding TS file and we will see that in a second. Reactive forms have a submit event instead of ng submit. Also, ng model is replaced with form control name property. Name attribute is also not required. We need to have a form group with this name having a form control with this name. Let's see how to create this in TS file. Define the variable name same as given in HTML file. Assign it to a new form group. Add a control with the same key as in HTML and assign it a new form control instance. In the submit function, print the selected value. Form group has a controls property which contains all its form controls. This is an array. We can access a control using its name as given inside form group and its value with value property. Form group and form control name directives are defined in reactive forms module. So we need to import it in this components module. Select a value and hit save. We get the selected ID. If we change bind value to name, then we will get the selected label. Suppose we want to display a pre selected value. Let's say while editing the form, we need to set ng selects value from backend server. Then we need to initialize its form control with that value. So Let's use this variable as the initial value on page load. Now change this to 2 so that the option with ID 2 will be selected by default. In real application, you can set this to value returned by the server. Look, second option is selected. If you need any assistance regarding ng-select, then you can refer its detailed documentation here. It also lists all the properties and events provided. That is all for this video.